For those of you who are watching at home on the live stream, good morning. We finally have made contact with you. It, it, uh, although you're probably very close by, many of you, at the same time, um, it probably feels a little bit, certainly to me, standing here, as though you might be on Mars. But we're delighted we've made contact anyway, and uh, we hope that your Christmas Day has started well, as we do indeed all of you, of course, uh, who are here. Um, we weren't expecting many, and I do have to say, um, please remember there is no service here this coming Sunday, and nor again on the following Sunday, because we simply can't um, get enough people together to do the live streaming. This morning is a very simple service. Um, one of the things we've enjoyed, I hope whether at home or here, you've enjoyed listening to the wonderful singing of our choir, all of whom were singing their own parts at home, and it was, all, and it was knitted together on the editing uh, suite by Crystal, and it really sounds incredibly authentic. So I'm going to suggest that we start our service just listening to our choir singing, O Come, All Ye Faithful. joy. And to us a child is born. He is Christ the Lord. Well, hallelujah. I'm going to light our final candle now. Now, you, I think you haven't got the words for this, but don't worry. 
Um, what I want you to do is say after me, you are light, you are hope. So when I say it, you just say it after me. We light this candle for the newborn Christ, reawakening hope and faith, the word embodied for our time. God, as we receive your promise, you are light, you are hope. And we prepare ourselves for this service, short as it will be, in the words of the preparation prayer, which we say together, God of our days and years, we set this time apart from you. Form us in the likeness of Christ, so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. And we come now to our confession. Hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Therefore, let us seek forgiveness, the forgiveness of God through Jesus, the Saviour of the world. Christ came in humility to share our lives. Forgive our pride. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ came with good news for all people. Forgive our silence. Christ, have mercy. Christ came in love to a world of suffering. Forgive our self-centeredness. Lord, have mercy. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I think it would be good... Uh, as it's Christmas Day, to say the words of the Gloria together. Sorry we can't sing them, but it is a traditional end to Advent to sing the Gloria at the First Communion of Christmas. So, But please stay seated and say them. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Can you find more Jesus? The sins of the world have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Whether you're here in church or at home, I suspect we share one thing in common this Christmas, which is that it seems extremely strange. <laughs> Take a moment just to close your eyes before we hear the collect. And to offer this day, strange as it is, but with all its potential and possibilities, to God. I'll use the Christmas Day prayer. God our Father whose word has come among us in the holy child of Bethlehem. 
May the light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds through him who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Now we'll hear our first two readings. first reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 2 and 6 to 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from Titus, chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, and he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous of good deeds. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Going to hear some more music in a moment. Thank you to Amy and Lizzie. Amy is multitasking this morning. Having read, we will hear a lovely carol, um, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Thank you. 
hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. And Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. An angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please sit down. <clears throat> Those words are probably some of the most familiar, uh, even to non-churchgoers, uh, in the English language. We are so familiar with the story of the birth of Jesus. We sometimes forget what, might, what it might have been like in those days. What it might have been for, for those who were part of the scene. Because for all we can say, looking back with hindsight... We know something of God's purposes for humankind in what happened. Most of them didn't. I always feel a bit sorry for the innkeeper. The thing with the innkeeper is that he's a very useful extra in children's nativity plays. Um, you know, along with the shepherds and their tea towels, you've got to remember it uh, from your school. It's been going on for a long time. But the innkeeper actually played a very important part. The first thing about him, of course, is that he didn't know what was going on. All he knew was that his premises were full of people who were completing the appropriate documentation. He didn't realise that there was something else going to happen, which in itself seemed quite unremarkable. A woman arrives after a long journey from Bethlehem, heavily pregnant. The bumpy journey, probably its length as well, it could have been several days, meant that by the time she arrived, it was uh, just about time for the baby to arrive. The innkeeper, of course, could simply have said, no thanks, Perhaps some of the other innkeepers did. If a nativity play needs a lot of innkeepers or a lot of extras, then you have several saying, no room here. This particular innkeeper didn't. 
this particular innkeeper said, we'll have to do something for you. I tell you what, come out to the cave at the back. Animals were frequently kept in caves in those days to keep them out of the heat and away from marauding animals at night. And so Mary and Joseph clip-clop, as they do in a nativity play, out to the uh, cave. And perhaps the innkeeper laid some fresh straw there. His act of kindness, even if he didn't realise who he was doing it for, has become part of the story of Jesus and actually part of our story too. And our response, when we engage in acts of kindness, when we pick the phone up to somebody, when we text them or email them, we may not realise what is going on behind the immediate interaction. Whatever it is we do, whether it's a small bit of putting ourselves out for somebody else, we could be making ourselves part of God's purposes and the story of his love coming to all people, wherever they are. I don't know if the innkeeper realised later on. Maybe he never did. But for sure he was part of God's plan that evening. Don't forget those little acts of kindness you never know where they might lead on to or ricochet towards. And then there are the shepherds. As you might imagine, confronted with a choir of angels, and if you watch the, um, the, uh, the uh, music and readings for Christmas service, I think it's still on the website, um, you know, there's a lovely um, reading that Sue and Amy did, um, which, uh, in which... Uh, I think it's Amy who has the wonderful line, like Metallica angels, loud, raucous, um, probably not very much like King's College Choir, although I do love them. We were blessed to have uh, friends with two boys in that choir, so we once got a front row seat in the middle of Lent. It was very beautiful. But that's not quite, I think, the picture that we're given. And the shepherds were terrified. They were petrified. Who wouldn't be? Who were they to suddenly be experiencing this? All they were doing was keeping their animals quiet overnight. And yet they too, like the innkeeper, responded when they heard the message. When the angels had finished their singing, they said to each other, come on, let's go down to Bethlehem and see what this is all about. And in responding, they became almost certainly the first to see this newborn baby, the Christ child. Would they have understood? Probably only very dimly. But I think they would have understood that in this, in a way, unremarkable event, God was at work. God's hand could be seen. And perhaps the angels in their loud singing suddenly alert us to the fact that even in the darkness that's around us today there is so much to praise and to praise God for. The shepherds were frightened as are many, many people at the moment in the world we live in. The coming of Jesus, the choir of angels Glory to God in the highest heaven. And yes, peace to his people on earth. And that peace is also about not being afraid. And so with the angels, we praise God. And if we feel anxious, like the shepherds, although perhaps for different reasons, we remember too that perfect love throws out fear. The perfect love that we see embodied in the baby at Bethlehem. The shepherds had one more thing to, take, to, to be blessed by, and that was they were the first, even though the poorest. Shepherds were the sort of people that you taught your children to avoid in the street. They were seen as ne'er-do-wells, 
They were seen as outcasts in society, really. People generally avoided them if they thought they were decent sorts. And God, as only God can, completely breaks all the rules, and it is the poorest who are the first to see the infant Christ. And if we feel that we have little to offer, perhaps we can remember those shepherds and remember that what little we have uh, is something that God can take. And much to their amazement, I would imagine, were they able to know about it now, those shepherds are remembered 2,000 years later, the poorest who became the richest in their spiritual awareness. Mary, all we know is that she just sat quietly, as you probably do after having a baby very recently, and she simply reflected on all these strange events. And perhaps we too can find time today to follow Mary, to reflect on the events. Perhaps the events around us at the moment seem as strange as um, the events of that night. But we too can offer our kindness like the innkeeper, not knowing whence it will go, we too, like the shepherds, can respond to the message and know our fear being taken away and obliterated by the love of God in Jesus. And then, like the angels, we praise God. And if you're singing some of the carols at home, that's absolutely fine. Just remember that we can't do it here. And like Mary, we go home. And whatever else you're doing today, and I'm sure it will be quieter than you were originally planning, take time to reflect. There is good news, because in the scene behind me, in the words that we speak, is the good news incarnate, embodied, Emmanuel, God with us. Take a moment then just to reflect, as Mary did, on the Christmas story and how you react to it. And how you respond to the infant Jesus who has come to all our lives. <clears throat> And so let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We stand for the creed. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now if you'd sit again, please. And Paul's going to lead our intercessions. <clears throat> our response today when you hear Lord of Love is hear and answer our prayer. Loving Father, at this holy time, we bring to you the needs and hurts of our world, which Jesus, your Son, came to share with us. Lord of love, hear and now answer, answer our, our prayer. prayer. At this holy time, your Son, our Saviour, was born in human flesh. We pray for the Church, your family, that we may be one in your love as we worship and serve you together in our community and wider world. Give us grace to overcome barriers of fear and distrust and work to build bridges of peace and justice. Lord of love, hear and answer our prayer. 
At this holy time, there was no room for your son in the inn. Protect with your love and comfort all those who are homeless, lonely, hungry, or who live in poverty, wherever they may be. Lord of love, hear yeah, and prayer. answer our prayer. At this holy time, strangers found the holy family in a stable and saw the baby lying in the manger. We pray for families and friends, your gift to us, though separated by present circumstances, with empty seats at their Christmas tables this year. We pray for our clergy, our staff, our volunteers and our congregation as they pursue our church mission in your name. Give us strength to show loyalty and respect to all who share our journey and bring comfort and peace to those enduring tension or break up because of lockdown and the joy of your loving presence to those who have no family. Lord of love, hear Here and, and answer, answer our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those we know who are unwell and suffering, physically or mentally, and for those whose grief is especially raw at this time of year. We pray for Chris Russell and Ruth Russell and all those who are in pain or distress in daily life or through COVID. Comfort and support them in their time of need. Lord of love, hear Here and I'm answer our prayer. prayer. At this holy time, your Christ came as a light shining in the darkness. We pray for light at the end of the COVID pandemic tunnel. We pray for all of those whose selfless efforts are keeping us safe at these difficult times, recognizing our NHS, our emergency services, our armed services, and public servants committed to protecting us today and in the future. We pray for those who work for peace and justice in the UK to maintain our way of life at this difficult time of Brexit. Lord of love, hear, hear and prayer. answer our prayer. At this holy time, shepherds in the field heard good tidings of joy and the angels sang, peace to God's people on earth. We pray for the world you have given us, rich and wonderful, though spoiled by exploitation and human greed. Give us wisdom to be good stewards of all you bestow on us and inspire the world's governments to overcome conflicts and poverty. Lord of love, hear, hear and answer, answer our prayer. prayer. We pray for friends we love but see no longer. Hold in your hand Graham Evans, Eric Payne, Greta Mantle, and all those who have recently passed and comfort all those mourning their loved ones. Give them your consolation and give us hope as we remember that eternal life is ours through the child of Bethlehem. Lord of love, hear Here and answer our prayer. At this holy time, we ask your blessing as we celebrate the birth of our Saviour while surrounded by so much uncertainty and anxiety. May joy transcend misery. May hope overcome despair. May peace obliterate conflict, and may your love fill our hearts, our community, and our world in Jesus, our Lord, born in Bethlehem. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers for, for the, the sake of your, your Son, our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And in a socially distance and approved fashion, please share the peace with one another. And if you're at home, you can ignore those words because you're in your own household or bubble. Please be with
Would you sit down, please? As grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now united on this table in bread and wine, so, Lord, may your whole church be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And now we give you thanks because you have brought us from darkness to light and made your light to shine in our hearts. You bring us to know your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, and so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Peter, Francis and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory be yours O oh, loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we pray with confidence, as Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. together we say, Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. 
all you who hunger and thirst for a better life, for a deeper faith, for a better world. Here is the bread of life. Feed on it with gratitude. Here is the cup of salvation. Drink from it and believe. The gifts of God for the people of God. And as I come round and bring the bread to you, we'll hear some more carols and music uh, as recorded by our choir. <laughs>
of music and readings. You may remember Leola reading this quite short but very moving piece. I'm going to say it again now in case you missed it um, or if you might like to hear it again. Um, thinking about the innkeeper who offered his cave and a feeding trough to the Holy Family. It's called Hope Came. Hope came curling up in bed next to the little girl who cries herself to sleep each night as her parents argue in the next room. Grace came, thumbing through the old magazines while sitting silently in the chair, next to the hospital bed, so when the old man awoke, he would see a familiar face. Love came, cracking her back as she stretched arms to the ceiling, trying to work out the kinks from cooking all night for the families, sound asleep in the community centre hall. Peace came, taking weapons out of our hands so we could build bridges and tear down walls. You came, you came just as you promised. We say the prayer on the screen together. Son of Mary, Son of God, we have joined the worship of the angels. May we never lose that heavenly vision. Like the shepherds, we have rejoiced at the news of your birth. And help us to proclaim that message in word and deed. To your praise and glory. Amen. Before the blessing, we'll hear one more carol from the choir, Hark the Herald, Angels Sing.
So may God, the Father who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of darkness, give us a place with the saints in light in the kingdom of his Son. Amen. And may the light of the glorious gospel of Christ shine in your hearts and transform your lives to bring his light to others. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us and with everyone we love and pray for this day, this Christmas tide, as 2021 dawns, and forevermore. Amen. going to go slightly off piece now. Um, as I've already said, no services in church for the next two Sundays. It'll all be on, your, on the website for you. If you uh, know somebody who isn't able to access the website, you might find that they're willing to let you join them. Uh, however it works for you, there may be ways in which we can help you to um, join together. And I hope that in your households and your bubbles who are watching at home, um, please keep all the rules, of course, um, but uh, please also join with us on, on the website. Please watch that website and let anyone know who uh, is able to access the website because there will be information about what's happening for the rest of January. Our anticipation is that we will be pre-recording all services up to and including the 31st of January, but that will depend a little bit on what Bishop Andrew says when I've emailed him this week, this coming week. So um, please just watch out for that. And hopefully, God willing, we will have better news as the spring approaches, um, as Easter approaches. I don't know about you, but I'd be very happy after last or the beginning of this year to have Easter in church again. And let's pray that God will bless us with that um, and bless those who in the meantime are going to be administering our vaccines. We're going to sing to you again in a moment. But before that, um, of course, we're going to wish you a Merry Christmas. We all do. But I do want to say that um, although there aren't that many of us this morning, probably better if we all leave as quickly as we can. I'm going to say to those who are responsible, I'm very happy to... Um, lock up the church so you don't feel you need to stay if you don't want to. I love this Christmas wish, though. It's called Light Crumpling Up the Darkness. This Christmas, I wish for you light to crumple up the darkness. This Christmas, I wish for you love to pull us closer to one another. This Christmas, I wish for you peace of which the angels sang. This Christmas I wish for you starlight to follow you on your way home. This Christmas I wish for you God's promise to keep hope alive for you. This Christmas I wish for you God newly born and in the flesh. This Christmas I wish for you Jesus Christ Born this night, light of the world. Please um, follow the instructions. If you want to listen, we're not going to be taking very long over singing, I don't think. Um, sorry you can't join with us if you're in here, but if you're at home, you're welcome to, if you've got enough breath. Um, and uh, then when we've finished, please make your way... Um, home. We wish you all a very happy Christmas. God's blessing. Um, those of you who know me well know that Christmas cracker jokes are uh, among my um, favoured uh, joys at Christmas time. I want to share with you one that came from the States the other day. Uh, some of you may have seen it, but the question that comes on your Christmas cracker little bit of paper says um, uh, why, uh, what, what about the um, after eight mint that infiltrated everyone's Christmas dinner? Turned out it was a mint spy. <laughs> I know, it's terrible, isn't it?
I love doing that. And of course, you all know my, my other favourite, well, the Star Wars joke, of course. Um, well, how did Luke Skywalker know what Darth Vader had given him for Christmas? Answer, he could feel his presence. <laughs> Terrible, but we do pray seriously that you will feel and know the presence of Jesus, the saviour of the world with you this year, whatever else you're doing. We're going to sing to you now. Bless you.